Hello and welcome back to Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord with Trajan147 John here. And I believe this is my technically my sixth episode, part five in the Exploring Colorado series. My first video was playing through the tutorial of the game. And I've taken some time to think about how I want to format this series going forward. And because this is just one of two games I've done a Let's Play series for so far. I've got Crusader Kings 2 that I'm playing through. And originally I was just going to play through Mountain Blade 2 like I do Crusader Kings where I just live record and record for a session, then go back, edit it up, do a video. I don't think that's going to work the same for Bannerlord as it does for Crusader Kings 2 because there's going to be a lot of stuff that I do that may get monotonous like the trading and some of the battles. I think for Bannerlord what I'm going to do going forward is I'm going to be more goal oriented with each video and it may take more than one recording session to get one good video ready. So Crusader Kings 2 is going to continue to be my primary series for this channel. And Bannerlord is going to be secondary, but I'm still going to try to upload a video, whether it's once a week or once every two weeks. I am going to keep the series going, but it's going to be format, like I said, it's going to be a different format than my Crusader Kings 2 series. So, with that being said, my goal for this video, for this episode, is to concentrate on our story quests. We're also going to look at we may also have some side quests on the side, some trading and battles. A lot of that I may keep off screen, we'll see. And um, as that won't be part of the video. My goal for this video, like I said, is going to be the story quests. I have two active quests right now. One is to rebuild my clan. I already have two of the objectives. I've already reached clan tier one. My renown is is fifth has reached 50 and I've also hired a companion I have two of them in fact so two of my objectives for rebuilding my clan are complete I also need to grow my party to 20 men I'm close already 16 20 that won't take long and then my dinar my wealth I need 2000 I'm at 1477 now that shouldn't take too much difficulty to get to and possibly even in this video I would think that won't isn't too much of a stretch. The other quest that we're going to be working on is investigate Narich's folly. So, I I could have swore that I already talked to one noble about this, but my tracker is still at zero of ten. So, we'll we will also try to work on these quests. Rebuild your clan. I will probably I expect that I will get this quest completed in this episode. Narita's Folly. Maybe we'll see it. Just see it just depends on how long it takes to find how long it takes to find ten I'm gonna say eligible nobles or qualified nobles. Because like I said, I've already talked to one person about Narita's Folly and it did not impact my tracker. So we'll see just how difficult and how long it actually takes to complete this quest. So, like I said, my strategy, but I will probably, I probably won't do any more trading or much more trading on screen. Like I said, you can go back and watch my previous four videos and see some trading. Because primarily I just wanted to, I'm going to be playing this game for fun. And I hope that I can, I enjoy watching other people do their Let's Play series and Part of the reason I watch is to get an idea of how a game works or pick up some tips for them or just to have a good time watching. Sometimes I'll watch someone playing a game to see if it's a game that I really want to play. And um, so maybe someone comes along and watches some of my videos for the same reason. And, and another reason I'm not in a hurry to push this series is because it's still early access. There's been a lot of updates and patches. I have not had my game saved games affected by it yet, but I've only played for five hours. Other people who have played lots and lots more than I have have had more 
um, chances of having their safe games affected. I don't know anyone personally who has, but I do know that it has happened. But anyway, so enough um, rambling on. So, first thing I'm going to do is we're right outside of El Omor where we've been doing some trading. So I'm going to take a break from trading, at least on screen. I may do some trading off screen. And by off screen, I mean you won't see it. It'll, it'll be happening, but you won't necessarily see it in the episode. So around us, we've got some villagers. We have what looks like a noble, Sega's party, patrolling around Scorum. Scorum? Scor Scorin, okay. That threw me off for a second. I thought that said Skyrim. And it's like, wait, take a double check. Scorin is a little. Let's see. Remember how to. Right, it always always takes me a minute to remember what the controls are to pan and zoom in this game compared to some of the other games I'm playing. Scorn's just a little village outside of Omar, nothing. Just, we may talk to Sega. We may also come over here and talk to Oleg. He has the exclamation mark, so it looks like he actually has a quest that we might could get from him. We may be able to talk to him about the... um. Right. Narita's folly. So let's come over. We're going to prioritize talking to Olet just because he has an exclamation mark. We may be able to get a side quest from him. So let's come talk to Olek. Introduce ourselves. Alright, so he's got a fancy helmet there. Yours is a f not a face I know. What is your name, stranger? My name is John, sir. May I ask your name? I am Olek of the Kholoving, one of the ancient lineages of the Sturgeons. I am Lord of Omor. I don't know your name, but no matter. Some say there is greater honor to be found. Some say there is greater honor to found a great lineage than to be born with one. A victory won by my father, claimed by Ragnavad. Old King Vadenslav was brave enough. He led us all into battle. I stood at my father's side as we faced the Imperials eye to eye over the tops of our shields. It was like any battle where shield walls meet, thrust and push, struggling to stay on your feet. But you can't really describe it. Let's just say it's the kind of battle that sturgeons usually win. When the Imperials had had enough of us, they broke and ran for the ramparts. There they threw darts and rocks and their cursed fire. We had to go up ladders one by one. Vaden's lab was hit by a mace and went down. My father then went up, cleaving as he went, and rallied us and led us to the victory. My father took the Imperial Dragon Banner from dead Narita's hands. It's a famous story. and But then the little prince Ragnvad tried to claim it. My father broke it over his knee, threw it at him, and told him to get his own toys to play with. Ha! It was a good, good day. Thank you. And investigate folly quest log updated. Okay, sounds like we have made some progress. Oh, that continues. Is there anything else? Okay. Let's ask a quick question. I, what is it? Never mind. Okay, there's something I'd like to discuss. Mm, go on. Let's see. Alliance. Enter the service of Prince Ragnvad. Proposal. Energy thoughts on politics. Let's just see what jump thoughts on politics he has. Our family have been the masters of this corner of the woods since the gods willed that the trees grow and the rivers flow. Someone wants to call himself Prince of the Sturgeons? We have no quarrel with that. Just let that prince know that on our land, we're still the masters. Is there anything else? Nah, I'm gonna leave now. Very well, goodbye then. Okay, so I did not see any quests that I could get from him, but the exclamation mark appears to have gone away. So I'm assuming that exclamation mark meant that... Let's see, let's take a look at quests. Yes! You talked with Oleg and got some valuable information that may help you understand the artifact. Nobles talked to one of ten. Okay. 
So now I know what to look for. I can't just talk to any noble and make progress. I actually need to look for the nobles who have an exclamation mark next to them and talk to them about Naruto's folly. So one down, nine to go. So, and just to verify that, I'm going to come over here and talk to Sigus and his party. Now, I'm, I'm assuming I might be able to ask him about Nurse's Folly, but even if he has anything at all to say, I don't expect any progress. So, let's just test my theory out right here. Sika says, Yours is not a face I know. What is your name, stranger? I am John, and who are you? I am Sika of a Kuliving, a name you will have heard many times in the sagas of the Sturgeons. I have heard of you. Your name strikes fear in men's hearts. That is the best kind of reputation to have. Perhaps we may have interests in common. Can you tell me anything about the Battle of Pendraic? I wasn't there. I know Rag and Vad has some thoughts about it. Anything else? Okay. That was it for that. Goodbye. And just to verify, no progress made in our quest, so... That confirms it. I need to find nobles who have the exclamation mark. Okay, so we have made some valuable progress. So I am going to do a quick save right here. And so, like I said, this is going to be my first time using this new format that I've come up with. I'm actually going to stop end the recording right here. And I will start the recording again when I have something about to happen that I want to record. So stay tuned. And we are right back. We have just run into a sizable party of looters. In fact, they have us outnumbered 15 to 14. This would be an interesting battle. I've decided to go ahead and record it and it may or may not be in the episode but we also have our clan to rebuild and what better way to do that than by picking up some looters and getting some of our gear so that we can sell it in the nearby towns send her a die brigand archer look that way turn Forward! Okay, I'm just taking a minute here to practice, get familiar with the archers again, and let's see. Yeah, I'm doing absolutely horrible. Let's go ahead and tell everyone to charge. I am going to get off my horse, and and my horse is making a run for it, I see. I've been really bad at trying to hit people on horse back, so I'm just going to come in here and do some, make some quick work of some of these guys if I can. Ah yes, yeah, so we just destroyed them. Oh yes, yeah, so I also have some throwing axes. Someone got him though. Okay, that was a good quick battle. Oh yes, no losses. I I had I thought we were gonna have a losses in that battle, but we did. We destroyed them. Got some enemy to upgrade. Let's see. We may have a couple prisoners as well. Yes, we got two prisoners. And some men who can upgrade Imperial Archer to a Imperial Trainer. And Sturgeon Recruit. Ah, so he has two different potential. You can actually right click on one of these emblems and see the upgrade tree. I played Warband so many times, I always knew it. I had the different branches memorized, but Bannerlord is new. So I'm actually going to try to get some people on horseback. So for this guy, we're going to go with a Sturgeon Woodsman. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, we've got more of them ready to upgrade. Okay. Okay, two of them. Never mind. So, with some play time, hopefully these numbers will... It, it'll just take time to get used to the different classes and 
different soldier unit types. Okay, so a bunch of loot here. That's excellent. What I'm looking for is to see if there's any pole arms. There's actually some interesting. <laughs> I could have a rusty sickle, or a bent hatchet, or a rusty hoe. Pitchfork, I do need a polearm. I've been told that the best melee weapon to use on horseback is a polearm. I have a feeling that pitchfork might not be what they had in mind. Okay, so now that we're done with that battle, I'm going to go over to Omor and sell off my gear that I just took in that battle. And, but first, I'm going to take a look at my party and just see if there's anyone that, anyone at all that would benefit from any of that gear. Let's see, where do I need to go? I probably need to go to inventory. Yes, here we go. I'm just going to look real quick to see what my companions have and see what some of this other apparel Let's see, arm wraps. Okay, she doesn't have any arm wraps right now, so let's give those to her. And Alec, what about you? Okay, the fine commoner's shirt would be better than what you're wearing now. And how would you like how would you like to have a pitchfork, my good man? Okay, let's head right on over to Omor and let's see. There we go, fast forward. Sell off the extra gear that we took. And that gets us a little more gold up to 1700 so it's going to take a couple more a few more battles to get our wealth up to 2000 troops we could use a few more troops so if there are any troops here we can hire with a sturgeon recruit okay so it's going to take a little while to get our clan objective up but i still don't see why i can't do it in this episode especially if i break it up the recording sessions up and don't try to cram everything into one video. Okay, so I'm over here in Varcheg, and I found a few people that have some side quests here. I've already looked at Crass the Carpenter's quest. He basically wants me to deliver some hardwood for him, for some mer for mer to um help him with his business. Sounds like an easy quest. We may or may not take it. We got, let's see what some of these other guys have though. Puzzle the Velvet Keep Weaver. What is your quest, my good man? Let's see, Escort Merchant Caravan. We've done that already, honestly. Let's see, and Valachine, what about you? Fencing Stolen Goods and Varcheg. Let's see, let's get a little more information about this quest, shall we? Okay, let's see what this guy's quest is. I heard he may need some help with a problem. I've come into the possession of a stash of goods. I won't say how I got them, but I can't take them to the local merchants here. I need someone to buy these from me, and I'm willing to give a good discount. Let's see, how can I help? I have six loads of silver ore. I'll let you have them for 471 gold. You can't ask for than that. It's half the normal market price these days. I wouldn't try to sell them here. They might be recognized. But go to the next big city and no one will be any wise. What do you say? Okay. So, I can buy silver ore from him. Six loads of silver ore for a total of 471 dinar. And then try to go find some place else to sell them for a profit. That's probably doable. I really have no idea what I'd be getting into. Let's just back out of this quest though. That I may try again with that kind of quest later on. But right now it sounds a little... It sounds risky. 
so we are going to go with the other quest, Cross the Carpenter. We're going to take his quest, and my guess is that not as great a risk with his quest, but probably not as large a potential profit margin either. Okay, so I need to deliver six units of hardwood to his contact Rugen the Finger, who I can find in Maranath. Okay, and I don't have... If I had a companion with a trade of at least 15, I could send him or her and three men to do this quest for me. But since I don't have a, a qualified companion, I'll have to do it myself. Alright, we're going to give this quest a try. And we'll just keep an eye out for any nobles that we can talk to about Nurse's Folly on our way to Myronuth. First thing we need to do is figure out where on this map Myronuth is. Uh oh, what's this? Puzzle of the Velvet Weaver. One of the merchants in the town comes to talk to you as you are preparing to depart. We have heard rumors that you have purchased goods from Crest the Carpenter. Well, our laws require that only merchants resident in the city can buy goods directly from the artisans. I'm sure what you did was an honest mistake, but there are laws. Hand over contraband to me, and this will be at the end of it. I don't want to break the law. You can take the goods, or that's just robbery under the cover of law. I'm not giving you anything. Respectfully, you're making a big mistake, and I think you're going to regret it. Okay. Let's see. Your criminal rating was such as increased by 30. That's not good. And my relation with Puzzle the Velvet Weaver is decreased to minus 10. Okay, um, I may have just made a big mistake. <laughs> okay, so I have a criminal rating now, which I don't know anything about. But I assume that there's a, I assume there's like a bounty on my head or something now. So much for this quest being less risky than the other quest. Let's see, Myronath. Let's see if we can figure out where Myronath is. Let's see, owner is cow dog. There's more characters. I don't see anything here. Okay, so it's a town. It's got four villages. I was hoping for a button that says, click here to see where Myronath is. Track. Let's try that. Maranath, where is Maranath? There it is, it's got the white dot. Okay, that is helpful. Alright, we're gonna head over to Maranath and deliver this hardwood. And let's hope we don't get any more trouble out of this, but I have a feeling that there's gonna be more trouble coming. Okay, here we are in Marinuth, and there's Rugen the Finger, who we need to go talk to. Let's see, he also has a quest. Rival gang moving in at Marinath. That does not sound like something I want to get involved in right now. Let's just give him the... Let's just deliver the six units of hardwood and get out of here. I don't think I know you, peace to you, stranger. I'm John. May I ask your name, sir? I'm Rugen. Ask around about me. You'll learn I'm someone you don't want to mess with. Alright, about the task Crash the Carpenter gave me. Yes, he sent word to us. We are expecting the hardwood, hardwood that he had. Here, you brought six units of hardwood. I have a fat purse of 650 dinar for you, as promised. Yes, I have the goods right here. I brought six units of hardwood as we agreed. I've delivered the goods, and I've got money, let's see, and I've gained a level, and my relation with Crass the Carpenter went up, and my relation with Puzzle of the Velvet Weaver is down to minus 15. Okay, so the Artisan Can't Sell Products quest has been completed. We delivered the six hardwood, 
we got the 650 dinar and that means we now have over 2,000 gold which means rebuild your clan mission success we just need three more men in our party to have all four objectives and we've got to maintain 2,000 dinar right now we're to be good by 302 okay so no ah uh, yes we've got some people we can recruit right here got Britannian volunteer looks like these are all the same types so let's just go ahead and recruit and that gives us a 20 in our party rebuild your clan log updated rebuild your clan everything is checked off okay check 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 it's in the old quests section so if I come over here to the clan button clan tier 1 okay so I can upgrade to clan tier 2 when I have 150 renown I'm currently at 80 clan tier bonus additional clan party plus one additional companion limit plus ah so I am limited to how many compa how many companions I can have based on what my clan tier is Additional party size for every party in the clan, plus 15. Eligible for being a vassal, plus 1. Okay, so the clan, tier, the clan system does have a bigger role than I could have guessed it was going to have. Okay, so one of our two objectives for this episode is complete. We still need to talk to nine more nobles about Naruto's Folly. This one's probably going to take a little longer. Um, we may or may not get in this episode. But I'm just going to end this clip right here. And we'll see where we meet up again. Good news. We have found another lord. Noble who has an exclamation mark, so we should be able to talk to him about Naritsu's folly. Ragnvad, let's see if we can catch him before he gets into Varcheg. Nope, he made it into Varcheg. Let's see if we can still get in here and talk to him. Let's see. If we click on Ragnvad's party, okay. Can we? Talk party leader is grayed out for some reason. Okay, let's. Maybe he's in the. Let's see, can't. We could pay a bribe. There's a lot of money. Okay, we're just gonna wait outside the town for a few minutes and see if he will show us show himself. There he is, he has left Varcheg, so while I was waiting I just clicked the wait here for some time button and then as soon as he popped out I hit stop waiting. Let's catch up to him and ask him about Naruto's folly. Yours is not a face I know, what is your name stranger? My name is John sir, may I ask your name? He is Ragnarvard, King of the Sturgeons, Lord of Varcheg and Balagard. So he's an important person to know. Alright, can you tell me about the Battle of Pendraic? Yes, the day my father died, thanks to Batanian treachery. When they pledged to support us in the battle, we believed they would stand with us in the shield wall like men. But of course, this is not the Batanian way. They sprung some woodland trickery up in the hills killed off Naruto's vanguard and no doubt spent the rest of the battle whooping and boasting and chopping the heads off of men who were already dead. It was Sturgeons who met Naruto's guard face to face. 
My father ordered me to stay back as he led them into battle, but he was at their head. He forced them back, then they broke and ran for the shelter of their camp. We went and attacked their ramparts and broke them, but my father was hit by an imperial mace at the moment of his triumph and died. I will never forget when a messenger ran to tell me that my father was dead, but I knew I must swallow my grief because now I was king. I rode down into the ruins of the imperial camp to take the banner as a trophy, my inheritance won by my father and passed down to me. Oh, some of the boyars were insubordinate, but I have since showed them that I am master. Thank you. Okay, so vlog update. That's two nobles talked to Nabot Nurse's Folly. Eight to go. And what do you know, another noble with an exclamation mark. He's got a big party too. This is Godrin. Says he is besieging Kaleas Castle. He must be on his way to besiege ca that castle. Well, let's intercept him and talk to him about this um, battle of Pendraic. I am John. Who are you? He is Godun of the. Uh, Vagravang, one of the ancient lineages of the Sturgeons. I am Lord of Teal. Can you tell me about the Battle of Pendriac, sir? Yes, it was madness. The greatest blow struck against the Empire in a lifetime, and we squandered it by squabbling among ourselves about a flag. They say Olek the Old had pried the dragon banner out of the Emperor's dead hands, but then Prince Ragnvad, who had not so much as drawn his sword in the battle, claimed it as a trophy. Olek, who was covered in his enemy's blood, laughed at Ragnvad and told him to go find his own toy to play with. Ragnvad struck him, so Olek broke the banner staff over his knee and threw it in his prince's faith. Or perhaps it was just Ragnvad. He was stewing in his anger when, he, when up comes the Batanian king, Kaladog. The Batanians had taken the time stripping the bodies of Imperial Vanguard, and the Sturgeons were angry at them, so Ragnvad called him a coward. Kaladog sneers at him and walks off, insults his most powerful vassal, and then insults his most valued ally. A fine day's work, wouldn't you say? But he has grown wise he has grown wiser since, though no more pleasant to spend the time with. Okay. We're making some progress on our quest here. Let's see where that puts us. Right, three nobles talked to. We've already talked to Olek, Ragnvad, Godin. Okay, so here I am in the shop at Varcheg, looking at buying some more gear and some a new horse. I was just noticing that everything in red I cannot use yet. Like this Batanian war mount re requires riding 60. My riding is not at 60 yet. The desert horse, however, requires riding 10. I do have at least that much riding, so that is good. There's some bows down here I can't use yet either. A crossbow. But, anyways, I'm gonna buy. I've got lots of gold. Got 3,000, excuse me, dinars. I'm going to buy a desert horse, and I'm also going to buy a shield. I'm going to have to give up one of my weapon slots for a shield. I'll probably give up the throwing axes. And let's see, let's take a look here. Weapon tier, weight. I'm looking at speed, hit points. So, and also cost. So, reinforced cavalry, small shield. I don't see where it says how much it carries. I mean, how much cover it provides. Weapon class 2. So, let's see. Like cavalry shield. So far, it looks like.
Okay, so the Northern Cavalry Kite Shield. Ooh, tall here, she don't have enough money for that one. Alright, the Northern Cavalry Kite Shield. I think we're going to go with that one. It's got, it's not extremely heavy, 4.7 weight. Weapon tier 3. Speed is 101, hit points 300. That looks good. So we're going to go with that. And... Let me make sure I've sold my prisoners. I keep forgetting about that. Go to Tavern District. Ah, renting me prisoners. Good. I tend to forget about that one. So we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and call it for this episode right here. And we will pick up where we left off and looking, working on the Narita's Folly quest in the next episode. Thanks for watching our Let's Play Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord series. This is John. See you next time.